Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Eva Fanalongo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So today I'm going to be reacting to life of Prophet Muhammad. This could change your life, Mufti Meng 2019. It's going to be in two parts because it's too long and yeah. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. By the story of the greatest of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was already told about his rank. He knew it. He was a messenger. Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to him. He used to stand in salah until his feet were swollen. Our feet only swell when we take a long journey from here to Singapore by air. Then you find the feet swelling and then we have to rest with our feet up for a while. Has our, have our feet ever swollen that much through salah? Let's be honest. Still we feel lazy. People complain five minutes too much, five minutes too little. That's the test of Allah. If your feet can swell once in your life because of Salah, Wallahi, you have followed the example, the greatest example in existence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good health and may He make our feet bear the Salah that we read because our Salah is no comparison to the Salah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was born, unlike all the other children, the narrations make mention that when he was born, he came down with his hands, his hands down and his face was looking up to the skies. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pure, already circumcised and his umbilical cord was already separated. His love, his purity of the heart, his love for sacrifice, the, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, if you take a look at those companions, 99 of them would give their lives in order to build the life of one of them. I'm sure you know the story of the companions during one of the battles where there was water required. One needed it and he saw his brother had a need. He passed it. And the other one saw his brother had a need. He passed it. And the other one saw his brother had a need. He passed it until they lost their lives in order to save the life of the next man. Today, 99 of us would gather around one man in order to destroy him. That's the opposite. See, totally opposite. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He grant us that selflessness once again, where we can sacrifice. Allah praises the Ansar. Allah says, يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ The companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give preference over themselves even if they are in dire need. Even if they are in dire need of that particular item, they would still give it away. Today our zakah, to calculate it, we become a little bit stingy. What about the sadaqat, the voluntary charities? You find small figures. Alhamdulillah, it's good. It's better than nothing. But open your heart. Spend. And this is why the best dirham, the best that is spent in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that which you spend whilst you are fearing poverty. And you're still spending. That is now from the heart. Allahu Akbar. When you're fearing, hey, I might need this, but no, this man needs it more. Let me take a little bit of it and give him. We sometimes are not even ready to share with our own brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Remember one thing. We always harp on about how important it is to follow the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How will we know it if we haven't gone through his life? Subhanallah. When a person is involved in haram, whether it is womanizing, drinking, gambling, any other bad habit, pornography, whatever else it is, believe me, your sustenance crashes and the barakah in your wealth actually goes away. Yet, if you had to calculate how much Allah put into your direction, it would be so much, perhaps in its millions. But where did it all go? Well, you've got haram habits. That's where it all went. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Inna rajula la yuhramu rizqu yusibuhu. A man is blocked from sustenance because of the sins he commits sometimes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. You can never achieve sustenance through the displeasure of the owner of sustenance. Allahu Akbar. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. The importance of learning the history of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does it do and what will it do to me if I study the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Point number one. The first point that I want to raise. It increases my love for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the same time, it increases my love for his maker who has made me as well. When it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we being his ummah, it is only befitting that we take our time to go through the life of the most blessed of all creatures, the high and the loftiest in rank of all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question is, we listen about people who have passed away in positions of salah. Do we even read our salah to start with? That's the question. So what chances do we have to die in the position of sujood when we don't even make that sajda? By learning the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will become regular with our duties unto Allah. So he was from the clan of Banu Hashim who fell under Quraysh. So his father's name was Abdullah. His grandfather was Abdul Muttalib. Where was he born? He was born in Mecca. Today, if you travel to Mecca to Al-Mukarramah, you will notice where Safa and Marwa is. If you were to come out on that side, you notice a large open space where people read Salah. Very soon it's going to be taken into the Haram. Then you will notice a building standing on its own known as a library. It is reported that just there was the birthplace of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the football stars, we know them. Our children know them. They know who are their girlfriends, Astaghfirullah. They know their team. They wear the t-shirts of the team. Even if it has a devil drawn on it, they don't mind. Am I right? These are Muslim children because they are following. They will cut their hair like baboons in order to look like someone who is just able to kick a ball in the globe on the globe. Allahu Akbar. But when you ask them about the names of the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very rarely will they give them to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use this month of Ramadan to motivate us and our children. In the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a perfect example for those who are looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who are looking forward to the last day. How many of us are looking forward to meeting with Allah, to meeting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the others. A lot of us are clinging to earth. And we cling to earth in a way that we usurp the wealth of people. We hate people for no reason besides a few dollars and cents. And what happens? We stop talking to our own brothers and sisters because of some little monetary issue. Why should that be the case? If you want, here follow the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have a problem with today's generations where the young girls are looking for men who are already wealthy, who have everything in life. And all they need to do is now fit on the man's arm and walk to the mall. That's what some people think. But they don't realize those who have had humble beginnings, where they have struggled for several years, sometimes decades, and then come up on their two feet. Sometimes those marriages are much more blessed than hunting for the wealthiest of all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The reason I make mention of this, look at the choice of Khadija radiallahu anha. She chose a man orphaned. She chose a man who basically had nothing besides honesty, dignity, and that high lofty level of character and conduct, subhanallah. And yet he had never taken part in anything that would have put a mark on his reputation or put a negative mark on his reputation. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not a proud man. He was honest. He was dignified, straightforward, trustworthy, truthful. He says, ma ana biqari. So Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam embraced him and hugged him tight until he was almost suffocating and then released him and told him again, Iqra. So he says, Ma ana biqari, I am not a reader. You're asking me to read, I am not a reader. So Jibreel alayhi salam, the archangel Gabriel, may peace be upon him, embraced him once again and hugged him tight until he almost suffocated and then released him again. And he says, Iqra for the third time. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam for the third time says, Ma ana biqari. He embraced him for the third time and released him. The verses were revealed. We, we can read every booklet. We still haven't read the main book. Think of it. He could not read, but he knew that book off by heart. 
We can read and write and we are proud and we send our children to school from an early age. We're so excited when they can say A to Z all the way at the age of three and two and we get so happy, but they still haven't read the Quran and they still don't know what the whole world is all about. And some of us are still guilty of that, yet we are 40, 50, 60 years old. Not once did we read the meaning of the Quran. It happens. This is the weakness of man. And yet the first word to be revealed is Iqra. If you're not going to read the word of Allah, what are you going to read? So this is a challenge to you all and to myself. Read the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before your time is up. You are not going to have a response when Allah asks you, I reveal the word read. Did you read my word? What are we going to say? La ilaha illallah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was such an upright man. When he ran down, he knew he could trust his wife. Today they say you tell your wife something the whole dunya knows. I hope that's not the case with us. But they say you want to spread news, it's email. Faster than email is female. Allahu Akbar. Allah protect us. I hope that's not true. But sometimes this is what goes on. When someone has entrusted you with a secret, you take it to the grave. Believe me, you take it to the grave. Look at the quality. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa rushing down. What does he say? He comes down and he is sweating and he is now feeling cold and he is now in awe and he is shivering and he is saying Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me, cover me. What has happened? His wife, beloved Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha immediately covers him and she says, what is happening? What is wrong? And he narrates what had happened and she says, Kalla wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abada. Nay, never. Allah will never ever let you down. Nothing bad can happen to you. You are such an upright man. You assist those in need. You fulfill your family ties. You help the widows and the orphans. You always are out helping people. You have such great character and conduct. And she began singing praise. Why singing praise? Because this man was indeed the one who was really as she was mentioning. With us, your wife tells you, oh, you're such a wonderful man. But inside she knows, I have to say this because I need something. It happens sometimes. If you ask her, you love me the most, she says, I love you the most. Inshallah, I hope it's the case. But sometimes she has to say it because what option does she have? It was the house of Abu Talib because his father had passed away. When he was seven months in his mother's womb and the father was 25 years old, very young. If you take a careful look at what the historians say, they say Allah took this man away. After his seed was planted into the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his job in this dunya was over. His job in the world was over. And he passed away 25 years old whilst Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seven months in the womb of his mother. And his mother Amina binti Wahab ibn Abd Manaf who was also from the similar clan of Quraysh. She says it was the easiest, the easiest gestation period. The pregnancy was simple. I didn't feel anything. The childbirth was absolutely easy. As though I didn't even give birth. Subhanallah. The most blessed of all creatures was just being born. We want to go into the moment of birth. Inshallah in a few moments. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us with the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith. This video is talking about a lot of things that need our attention in life. There's a lot of things that are very true. We should be talking about them they could actually help us overcome certain situations. But then I was just shocked in the beginning. He said Muhammad was born circumcised. That's, that's very, very new to me. Very, very new. Otherwise, when it comes to charity, let's help each other. Let's help someone we know that's in need if we have the means to help. But if we don't, let's wait for a time until we're comfortable enough um, to help also sometimes people have this pride to ask for help always ask for help when you need help people can guess that you need help yes they're saying you put um a lot but then someone can't guess you need help if you don't ask for help ask and someone will help you like i said there's many many things that are being mentioned in here that i want to touch upon but 
first let me just watch the rest of the video that's then we can hopefully comment on those 